Alrighty, hello friends on the YouTube side. I'm actually not streaming this for once. Welcome to Retropolis. Or welcome back if you know the game already. The short version is this is a base defending wave based card deck building game. And I'm going to try and basically try and complete this on the highest difficulty with the female scientist leader, which I haven't done before. So this would be a first. So I'm just going to choose random location because I haven't quite decided on which one might be the most favorable or difficult. I don't know. Either way, welcome. Let's see how this is going to go. So first of all, cheese cards. The more cheese cards you have in hand, the more money you get per used cheese card. And the leader ability duplicates a random card temporarily. The game causes ephemeral duplication. Plus on top of that, I do have a inherent advisor, basically a passive buff guy that just kind of gives me the ability to have the cards cost less whenever I have multiple of that card in hand. So in a sense, it actually synergizes reasonably well with cheese. Because the more cheese you have, the more money you get, and well, the more you get as well. Um, Naturals is, and Grain are both cards that kind of work over time, and just kind of, once they complete, they give me a bit of money. Those are generally considered to be labor cards. So the first wave over here is three little rats and a big guy, which does mean that the wall is going to hold here no matter what, but it's just going to take a while until these two guards are going to actually take care of them. Especially the big guy, he has just a bit more HP. But at least there's no jumpy rats. So, the highest difficulty is basically there are... Okay, no jumpy rats there either. The highest difficulty basically implies that there are... More enemies, stronger enemies, everything costs more, I have a rebel card that does absolutely nothing in my hand, and... Generally speaking, everything is just more difficult. That's the short version. Like, it is quite the number of modifiers. Too many to count them out. Also, whenever there's wave 10, 20, and 30, those are the boss waves, the big boss waves, and those are going to be two bosses at the same time, rather than just one. One is often just dicey. So yeah, I have the choice here after completing a wave in the treasure chest. In this case, an expansion card, upgrading a building. I only have a house or wall, so not that great to upgrade. And the leader level up. So this allows me to replicate two cards whenever I get this. Also, there's no flyer rats. Flyer are the ones that would jump over the walls, which are, well, especially early on, the most annoying ones to deal with. Because I almost have to use an electric ratron, which is effectively a melee card that is just going to stop them from going anywhere. So after the first wave, we also have a market where we can purchase cards. There's always a defensive wall in the second slot. Not sure why it's the second slot, but that's what it is. Gonna buy a wall and a house. House allows me to have more population space, reticence, in order to have more guards that shoot enemies or ratrons that just defend in the front lines. Let's see what else do we have. Get money whenever you play a skill card. I don't think I have any skill cards. These are the blue ones, these guys. So we we'll get money whenever I play one of those. It's actually kind of important that you don't get too many cards because you only draw five at a time. And if your deck is too large, well, you're just going to draw five and it might not be the ones that you need. It's kind of a balancing act between what you may want to have and what is actually useful. Generate is not that useful. Scrap shower. It's not that great either. Scrap Shower basically allows you to remove the scrap cards from your deck. Also, I'm going to move this guy a little bit backwards and then back forwards. Because this shooty guy here is always shooting slightly behind the wall. Just about where the long range guards are normally standing. So there's that. Alrighty, I have expanded one wall. Oh, that's tempting. And you always get the choice between a random advisor, which can range from not that useful to really good. Or three house cards. Three house cards allows me to get more minions, more radisons. Oh, also, whenever I expand the wall, by the way, I lose some radisons because that's part of the higher difficulty. Um, a Zeus advisor gives me two level two crackle cards, which I think could be great. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So this card here previously was Naturals, which generates money, and now it's Chemicals. 
Chemicals allows me to permanently reduce the cost of a card. And I'm going to effectively permanently reduce the cost of Crackle here. Which is handy. Um, I didn't check what enemies are going to come in, but well, I guess we'll see. Could expand or remove a card. I think I need more houses for more minions. So Crackle basically gives you static cards, temporary static cards, which you can use. Okay, there's two jumpy rats. We only have three minions. This might not turn out well. Okay, they actually didn't die. There's more jumpy rats though coming, so might knock out the one that is low HP, or I get lucky with their attack pattern. Nope, didn't get that lucky. One is done. Get a Watchtower card. That is actually very good early on. It's not going to be that crazy later for this leader in particular, but right now it is really good. And I could immediately get an expansion card on top of it. Sure, let's just build at the Watchtower and upgrade it immediately. You always build the Watchtower one space behind the wall for the same reason as to why I moved the other minions back as well, the guards on the right side. So we have two flyers, so I do want to have a melee Ratron here in the front. Also, whenever Ratrons die, Ratron is the concept of your minions will have an effect when they die. In this case, it applies two electrons to enemies when it dies. Electrons are basically stacking up to three, and they deal 20 damage to all enemies around it. So the damage is really, really good in the early stages of the game. 20 is a lot. However, whenever they die, they also get the negative of giving you scrap. Scrap doesn't do anything. However, if you use the leader ability, then you can morph some cards. In this case, the scrap morphs into a tiny bit of money, basically. So there's that. Cry of Widows is usually the event that comes after this wave, so we remove the Rebel card with that event, which now we have less cards in our deck, which is better. So this is, by the way, via Scrap Station, which removes the Scrap cards from your deck, or Scrap Shower, which allows you to deal damage via the Scrap cards, are really nice. But I don't plan on generating a whole lot of scraps, so... We'll see. Temporary damage on skill cards. I don't even have many skill cards. Skill cards I have don't deal any damage. Alright, we're gonna remove Grain. This is basically the money card that every leader gets. The problem is it costs two Radisons every time you play it. So... Also, it binds these Radisons up for like however long it last in this case 50 seconds and you only get 60 gold out of it which it costs very little but it uses up your population space and that's going to be more important to be used up otherwise so basically in a sense once i have enough minions to defend the city i literally don't even have a use for it anymore also this crackle card the first one i'm going to play is not going to do anything but the second one would hold up market let me get this uh house in order to get more minion space and the wall on the right side probably is a good idea this wall by the way is randomly upgraded in the shop there can be basically three random attachments to these cards one is up it's upgraded to level two which an upgraded thing usually does 50 percent better round it up so it can be really good. It can be literally twice as good. Um, level... It can also have half the cost. As well as... What it can have in the shop here is... I think two, double the card. So you get two for the price of one. In this case, it also costs me twice as much to actually plant the wall afterwards. I actually don't know if the cost at the bottom is doubled. But it's quite a bit of cost. So let's see. Um, do I need to worry about this wave? The fast guys are kind of worrisome. All right, I'm going to buy play two Crackle cards. Now I can play Static. What Static does, once again, is effectively I can play this on an enemy, and it applies electrons. And once it does so, three times, or three electrons total, I can just remove them. The Static cards themselves are really cheap to play, which is nice. But of course, one of the issues that we are running into... Oh, Naturals. Let's morph it. Ooh, Chemicals. Let's make the Ratron cheaper. 
And let's make the cheese card cheaper to play in the future. You have to discard the cards in order to make them cheaper, so I couldn't actually play it right now. Which is a bit inconvenient. Um, let's see. I can remove a card. Usually that's a good thing, but in this case I don't want to remove a card, so I'm just gonna get an expansion. I'm gonna play the chemicals. You don't actually have to discard a card. You can still draw new ones. Then I'm gonna discard Crackle, so it's gonna be cheaper the next time. And play Naturals. Wall on the right side. I think I might have to move the minions on the left. Because there's probably gonna be uh, jumpy guys. Like, one jumpy guy in the front is fine. I didn't check how many hours that the stair are. Because usually the tower will take care of it. Usually. Okay, I had to play, play some in there. Um, there's a big jumpy rat. This is a big prop, as you might be able to tell. Because now they're just running through. This is why I needed to call up over my other minions to deal with them. I'm gonna sell one, send one on to the right. Actually, I'm gonna sell, send all of you to the right. The rest of the ways can be dealt with with just the tower there. Because this next wave is coming already. Of course, one of the higher difficulty things is that the waves are coming more quickly. So this is going to be a big chest, which usually has an upgrade, a legendary card, an advisor, or uh, I think an expansion, which is two walls plus two houses. This guy is amazing. I need to be really strongly convinced to not pick this guy. A repairman. Every 10 seconds... You can instantly repair any building, including walls. So effectively, the enemies can take down your walls and you instantly repair it. If they are not fast enough to take it down in 10 seconds, you might just, you know, rebuild it. Okay, I'm just gonna take him. The other cards are actually decent. The ones that were offered, but not decent enough. Okay, I'm gonna move you forward. The others are coming eventually. Just hoping that there's not too many jumpy guys. I could crackle again, but it does cost me quite a bit of money to do so. But I think that is enough jumpy guys that I will want to make sure I take care of them. So yeah, it is quite expensive, unfortunately, for me to take care of them this way. Let's see, another watchtower is a really good idea on the left side. That way I can focus a minion army on the right side. And left side I can just build. There are two flyers. So I'm gonna put a minion here. And the tower back here. I could also duplicate cards right now if I wanted to. Usually it's also a good idea to try and duplicate like buildings, which normally can only build one building at a time. But you can duplicate those with the leader ability. It picks a random card, by the way, to duplicate. However, you can just empty your hand in order to guarantee it. Well, I say just empty your hand, but you might not be able to play all the minions or the cards. I think I'm gonna buy house and a wall. Ooh, that guy still got a shot off. I was hoping that they would be strong enough by now to just knock them out at this point. Naturals. The card I would like to upgrade is the Ratron, because then it would apply three Electrons at the same time. Meaning that it would immediately deal 20 damage to any enemy surrounding it. Which is really good. Alright, so we're gonna... Oh, this is awkward. I wanted to duplicate the house. Let's expand to the right. Fuel. Discard your hand for the next 10 seconds plus 50% attack and 100% move speed to all the Ratron units. So Ratrons are more, like, usually their effects are useful when they die, which giving them more attack and power is nice, but unless you manage to somehow specialize in that, it's not that great. Because their attack speed is not that great, they are usually melee units, so they don't do a whole lot either. Electron, money, expansion, or a house. Let's get an expansion card. 
So I could use my lead ability here. Alright, I'm gonna... But the scrap card is in the way. I can't play the scrap card unless I use my leader ability to begin with, which makes an alloy. Alright, there's gonna be seven flyers, and then other minions are gonna take down the front wall. Uh, often, actually, it's not that necessary in the forest area, but often you actually want to have... What's the word? You actually often want to have one front wall that goes down, because often enemies will just land straight behind it or skip the first wall entirely, and then land in the middle of your minions if you have them standing over there, so that's of course less than ideal. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the cheese card. This is going to lo lose me a bit of money, but that's okay. A Ratron to take care of the melee minions. Crackle, which will do nothing. But then I can play the expansion multiple times thanks to my leader ability. I'm going to expand this wall. And I think I might just expand this wall outside there. And then build a new one. As I said, in the forest it's generally speaking not really necessary that... Dude, also, whenever you expand the wall, it gets fully healed. I'm gonna put... Yeah, just upgrade the house, that way I can get more minions. Normally they give you three minion space. But upgraded houses give you five. As I said, it's rounded up. 50% rounded up. Alright, what do we get? This is a boss wave. They seem to come from both sides, which is interesting. Because often boss waves at wave 10 only come from one side. Oh, hi! There you are. I'm a dingus. I just lost the game. I need to do play Crackle. And then hope that I draw into the other Crackle. <laughs> Alright, and this is the highest difficulty. Make one small mistake, because you're not paying attention. And that's that. Okay, well, I'm just gonna try and see if I can get a good start, and then start recording again. Alrighty, we are back at wave 9, this time in the desert. I managed to get a reinforce cards, which allows me to discard my cards in order to reinforce the wall. I managed to upgrade the Ratron, so it's gonna spit 3 electrons. I have a Tesla Tower, a lightning rod, that is periodically just applying 1 electron to enemy on top of that. Which is kind of effectively, periodically some damage on top. Then I have an additional wall just outside here, which basically means it's gonna bunch up the enemies, and they will effectively be all in one big ball. On the right side, I have a bunch of shooty guys, as well as one squire. The squire is kind of weak initially, but it will eventually get decent. Also, I got a church, which allows me to remove one card from my deck every so often. And I'm going to get rid of naturals, I think. It's a decent money card and just reducing the cost, but it is so rarely, like, consistently valuable that I'm having trouble just kind of efficiently using it. Alright, the front line is all gone. The right side we have the big rat jumping in. This time we have a squire in the way. And the previous wave has been complete at level f wave 9. Alrighty, a dodge advisor. Minus one attack for all military cards I have. You know, that's kind of a big downgrade if our attack is three. So it's gonna get literally a one-third debuff. Or plus two attack to all military units deployed. Which is a very temporary thing, but you know, you struggle in the early game to survive. And now all of these guys have plus two damage, which is a pretty significant boost. I grab the leader ability. I'm also gonna rebuild this wall here. Unfortunately, I did not get the other builder advisor back. He is actually reasonably rare. So getting one was kind of more of a luck, lucky toss there, but yeah. Okay, the jumpy guy is coming from over there. Gonna put one of you here, one of you here. I'm just gonna start reinforcing this wall, I think. So this guy is gonna go down to the tower and guards in the back and this should be no problem. Random event. We could get an egg card. It cost me five population space. The squire already does cost me five population space. Both of these cards are interesting in that they effectively 
get better the longer they are alive. But I don't have the money or the population space at this point. I already got the squire, which you almost never take. I just happen to not have enough minions to be able to put places, is the short version. Actually gonna duplicate here to get cheese so I get a lot of money. And this restaurant is gonna explode. Boom. And I don't think I need the second one. Like, it would be nice to knock these guys out quicker, but I, it's just not necessary. I'm just gonna rather inf reinforce this wall. I also get a market. So this periodically gives me one card I can purchase. I can't purchase more than one. It's kind of an important distinction there. I would like to have a second uh, Ratron to upgrade to, but the Watchtower on the left side initially I think is still good. Like, this is wave 10. Now we're gonna get different and stronger enemies soon. Well, more or less right away, really. And... Yeah. Let's see. We're also in the desert, so we're gonna move to the back row here. And effectively, we deploy these Ratrons here as a bomb. Thanks to them being upgraded, they always deal 20 damage guaranteed to enemies. Plus one tax for every building constructed. I do have a few buildings. Tax is basically the periodic money you get. And it can work out quite well in the long run. Hmm. Or upgrade a card. I don't really feel like I have much to upgrade. Like these cards are nice if they are upgraded, but not game breaking. Actually, I guess upgrading guards would probably be helpful. Never mind. That way they deal, you know, life damage instead of two. Kind of like the ones we already have deployed, thanks to the random event earlier. So I'm going to reinforce the wall on the right side here. Which, by the way, also seems to just simultaneously heal it. I'm not entirely sure why. So the timer on the squire has run out. Which is good, because now it's a bachelor. But you have to deploy him again. He is decently strong and reasonably tanky. But um, the real kicker really is that you want him to survive. So I'm going to play him here, but I'm moving him back behind the wall. So they hit the wall rather than my bachelor, hopefully. Do they? Because the wall I can repair. With him, I could rip. Too late. Oh well, that was a lot of money spent for no reason. And also, <laughs> I guess the guy didn't survive. Alrighty. Defensive wall. I would like to expand on the right side further. Add market. If we survive in the later stages of the game, there's one very specific card that we effectively need in order to win. A lightning rod is cute. I might as well buy it. An apartment house for more minion space. Sure, we have the money right now to place it. So defensive wall built out on the right side. You guys move on forward. Apartment building I'm gonna build here, I guess. No, over here. The market I'm gonna build on the left side. I like to place stuff, generally speaking, on one side or the other. So we're gonna build a Latron here. The enemies are gonna bunch up on this wall, and this guy is gonna explode on all of them. That's kind of the general gist of how I like to try and play things. And I might as well just build a lightning tower, so this can actually just whittle down enemies. The problem is kind of like before. The enemies will occasionally shoot over the walls, although I think these guys do not, funnily enough. So, yeah. It deals two damage and applies one electron. So it's really not doing anything particularly great by itself. Okay. We have a lot of ratrons to place if I wanted to. I'm gonna explode here. I want the second one. Alright, we're gonna make them bunch up again. And because I have a lot of population space, I might as well place the other multiplied ratrons. Well, Smithy. Smithy is really nice because periodically you can up upgrade a card. And you can choose when you're going to upgrade it, which is great because, you know, that might be exceptionally helpful. So I'm going to put one of you guys... Uh, I'm just going to buy it. Put three here. One in backup. And upgrade this wall here. There's going to be like a mini boss or a boss, whatever it's going to be. What is it anyways? It's necromancy. It's going to revive a minion there. 
Uh, so on the right side we have a lot of minions here. I think reinforcing the left side just makes more sense for now. I am actually going to move this guy up too. And in fact I'm going to move one of these guys forward. So they start trying to take care of the enemies. Alright, Smithy. Just place it somewhere where it eventually will give me upgrades on demand. That guy's dead. Place another one. That guy's dead. Unfortunately, the Necromancer himself is not, generally speaking, going down without a fight, if that makes sense. Also, the explosion takes always a little bit, which is why I kind of don't want to stack my Ratrons up. I just kind of want to have them be one by one. So this next romance summons a minion, and apparently that minion is completely invulnerable. So they have to actually shoot like, over him or something. At least it seems to be completely invulnerable. Okay, that's interesting. So the Hyper Beam is one of the more intriguing cards here. This one allows me to survive one wave, probably, if I upgrade it. It deals 60 damage, but also my redraw cooldown is effectively like 60 seconds longer. To redraw, I can redraw for money, but the longer or the later waves we get, the more expensive it's going to be. So I, if I have enough money, I can just play this and pay the taxes for the redraw, the quicker one. But it's kind of... Uh, well, it's a... Uh, Oh crap button, basically. It's a short version. I need to pull my Ratrons back over there. That was a mistake, just letting them go down. That one did not need to die. Okay, money whenever you morph a card, which is cute. But you need to have your leader ability ready then to morph. Which takes a bit of more effort. Because I'm just going to get another wall. Which is actually an interesting point. Because... If I build it out right now... Hmm. Basically here, there's this sign here on each side. If you build beyond that sign... Uh, effectively what this means is that you get a special event where you usually just want to have no money right now. So I can't really pay it for the Hyper Beam and the Redraw cost right now. But I could just play the Hyper Beam. Also there's a merchant in town, hold up. What could I buy? The Warren I could buy, and then I would have little money left. It's technically useful. Alright. Oh right, I need the money for the Redraw. Oh this is not good. Or I need the money for actually placing the defensive wall. Okay, place this here. Oh god. Guys, you need... Oh no, you're fine. Apparently you just murdered them. Alright, lose all your gold. Then I would like to play these cards to get a tiny bit of money back. Alrighty, we can get plus two attack for all military units currently deployed, which makes these guys even more powerful, which is good. Or bounty, which gives me more money by per enemy killed. Five more gold. I'd rather take the minions right now. Or the power on the minions. Oh. Musketeer. Whenever you play the or use the leader ability, they get attack speed increases. They are cute, but I'm not sure how useful. I'm actually going to grab a stone skin card here. Come on. Redraw. Stone skin allows me to give my minions more maximum HP. Which is helpful. The warren allows me to basically periodically get minions, but the problem is, right now, um, there's enemies attacking. And my only way to deal with them is either using Hyper Beam or letting the Ratron explode on them. Just 20 damage, which is good, but not enough to take out one wave. On the right side, we should be okay, probably. Probably. These guys with the shield are pretty annoying. Oh, I need to reinforce this wall. 
otherwise it will go down. Shield guys. No, they're running back now, and that's they're gonna get murdered on the way back. The smith is actually gonna protect them for just long enough, I think, for them to get away. But you know the Oh you guys have actually made it. You guys are fired on the left side. I'm proud of you. Alright, we lost two minions, I think, here. This is kind of a big deal. Oh boy. This is not looking great. It's a struggle. Gotta remove the rebel card that we got. Oh yeah, I didn't rebuild the walls. Shoot. Too slow. Might have to use... So the towers actually shoot straight, so they actually mostly ignore the shield. These guys are doing so much work. Put the rat from here. Okay, I think they might be able to do it eventually here. But the zombie is going to just be annoying here. Alright, get a bunch of monies. Could have used them for reinforced cards as well. They come back to threaten the city. Come on, knock them out. Whenever you redraw, keep all skill cards. Okay, almost no matter what, yet yeah, this guy is too good. All the blue cards keep uh, stay in my hand whenever I redraw. This is insanely good because then that also means they no longer get to go back into the deck, which is fantastic. They're coming on the right side too. Guys, you move one forward. Can also place the Warren, the Smithy, to upgrade eventually. I am behind on everything right now. And can we even buy anything useful? Static. Uh, I guess the skill card stays in the hands, so might as well grab it. There's a maximum hand size of 10 cards, so that is something to consider. But at least um, the static card applies two electrons in conjunction with my lightning tower on the right side. Oh. That would actually be helpful. So yeah, this lightning tower is going to apply one static. And I needed to reinforce that wall. It would actually be good if they could just barely knock down the wall. Yes, that's perfect. I can just fully repair it thanks to this. Guys, you stay here. Okay, I need money. And I need to repair this wall ASAP. Do this. Alright. Um, I'm gonna static them. So I'm actually I'm gonna just rush from here. Maybe I should avoid it. That killed a lot of them already. Very good. Reinforce the wall on the right side, I think. Where my minions are standing behind it. <sighs> Just scoop some trash, add five scrap cards to their hand when you click trash? What? Oh. Plus one lead ability. Cannot use it after... Oh. So there are beneficial effects to wanting to have trash in your hand. I don't think I need another leader ability level, so I'm just gonna grab that. I've never actually had this. Where do I click the trash? What trash? I think I need to hyperbeam these. Yeah, I need to hyperbeam them. And I need to immediately redraw for money, which is expensive, but that was too many. We are not been not prepared for this. Speaking of money, I need more. Okay. Put... Oh, you guys are doing this. Right, they come back to threaten the city. It just kind of sends these little guys here. They are not dangerous. They are very slow. Hum... Um... What's the word? They don't do a whole lot. Money, 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 money. Should have done this earlier. 
but this also means there's minions here I can't rebuild my walls on the left side because of them which is kind of annoying want to place more of you guys here I'd like to reinforce I guess I can just reinforce later whenever I need to repair the wall because this stays in my hand thanks to the leader come on knock them out friends All right. Um, that's from here. Minions to the right. Why I get trash whenever I would play a skill card right now, right now. All right. They are getting through here. We're also on wave 19. Next one is a boss wave, and I do not think we have what it takes to get through. Not gonna lie. We are lacking all sorts of resources. Yeah, we can explode them on the left side here, and I think we can hyperbeam them on the right. I'm actually gonna wait until they knock down the wall, so I can fully repair it. But yeah, basically, the problem is they have shields. And my range guys just keep shooting into the shields. Guys, stay here. Okay, the boss comes from the right side. Is it two bosses? I think it's usually two bosses. Hmm. Get another house so I can get more minions. Upgrade the hyper beam so it deals more damage. Can rebuild the walls on the left, but I think it's gonna be more important to check what the merchant has and the boss coming from the right side already. Poison Fog. This could help me right now. Gonna get it. Breed is also a fascinating choice, but it's two of them. I would like to only have one, but... This gives me the ability to get more minions. Plate Doctor. There you are. Anti-inhibitor. I wish I could grab that too, but can only get one. Okay. Uh... Plague Doctor's coming too late, I think. This is not going to be anything we can reasonably stop, I don't think. Oh yeah, I didn't play my Hyper Beam, didn't redraw my hand. That was a mistake. That's a huge mistake. And we have five minutes left. Well, and this is the big boss wave. We needed the Plague Doctor, like... And I didn't even get the Hyper Beam. We needed the Plague Doctor, like... Three cards ago. Alright! I will be back if I get to wave 20 on a reasonable run. Bye. Alrighty, this time I attempted to be reasonably smart about one of my strategies. And I have decided to just use my leader ability in, you know, a reasonably smart way. Where I'm going to actually duplicate the watchtowers instead of planting the one I have. This way, I can effectively place a lot of these watchtowers every time my leader ability comes up. And they deal a good chunk of damage to all sorts of enemies from a pretty reasonably long distance. On the left side, I already have five, but they were not upgraded, so would prefer if they were upgraded, but I think this is going to turn out reasonably well overall. Now that I actually figured out that, you know, I should just probably try and duplicate something really useful. <laughs> and also upgrade my leader ability. At the very beginning of Retropolis, it used to be that whenever you get to upgrade your leader ability from one of these chests, you also simultaneously uh, get to like reset the leader cooldown so you wanted to use your leader ability just before the chests some other leader abilities are way more powerful others are just relatively weak or don't do a whole lot this one is exceptionally strong if used well which is kind of the big catch isn't it I'm gonna place one minion here just to deter the occasional enemy that gets through there's also a random rock here that is just in the way I can't do anything with it 
And I think we're good on both sides for protection right now. Alrighty. I'm just gonna continue, see if this works. The event right after is... You, I can get a repairman, which is in my opinion the best advisor in the entire game, to instantly repair stuff. For the cost of minus one to attack to all my cards. Which is probably okay if I just rely on the watchtowers. So I'm just gonna pick it. No! Ah, oh, why did I place the last one? Yaga, please! No, I needed that one. I got a Plague Doctor! Cost me all my money, but... Plague Doctors are amazing. <sighs> I'll get back if I can make it to Wave 20. With this. Alright, we're back on Wave 20, and I actually remember to start the recording. So... Tainted is the status effect in this game, where the afflicted enemy takes 10% more damage per tainted stack. So effectively, if I have a Plague Doctor, rank 2 right now, to upgrade them, uh, they apply 2 tainted stacks, so 20% more damage. And this just keeps stacking. That debuff never gets removed from the enemies. So in short, having more Plague Doctors that deal not much damage by themselves. But will just kind of keep stacking up more and more damage is great. Also, we have these Tesla Towers. These effectively mean that my Electron damage is higher. I just built a bunch because I didn't know what else to do at the time, because I didn't have the Plague Doctors yet. And I'm not sure this was a good choice, but... We also have the Reinforced card for the walls. Okay, so now the problem is you need you guys need to move back. Because these guys love to shoot behind walls and I need them to stay safe. The wall is going to hold for a long time. This thing has over a thousand HP. Thanks to reinforce, just kind of making me get more of those. I'm gonna place you here and move forward. I also got slums. Slums basically give you more radisson space, but it's not space efficient, and it actually costs you tax points whenever you play it. So, they are not gonna break through this wall, and even if they do, which is the funny part, I can instantly repair it thanks to the taxman. So having reinforced walls on top of uh, the repairman, having reinforced walls on top of the repairman it's basically just kind of a recipe for success by itself. Like, it's just ridiculous. This guy takes so much more damage. He's shielded from ranged attacks during the standstorm, I think. But I think the tainted stacks just keep applying still. Could you stop that? You know, I'd like to defeat you someday. I don't really have that many close range means. There we go. Alrighty. Whew. I don't need more leader levels right now. I have five, this is sufficient, so more money from defeating enemies is a good idea. Okay, this guy here, every seven like military units you play, the next card gets upgraded, but I only play upgraded cards anyways right now. So, and I might as well upgrade the reinforced card at this point, just so it gets more stuff on top of it. Also, I just built, built the slums outside here because I genuinely just straight up don't have space. It's kind of oddly, awkwardly similar to, I guess, regular slums. So, this side over here is not nearly as reinforced. So, these guys here will eventually break through, but this is why I built multiple walls outside. But because the boss came from the other side, I decided to just, you know, do the reasonable thing. Also, how much electron damage do we do? Let's put the slums here. Let's see. 50. Not bad. That's with all of the towers active. But these guys have more than 50 HP. 50-50 um, chance to get the Plague Doctors here. I got reinforced again. Oh well. 
At least the wall gets much stronger now. It's the second time that this happened, by the way. Seven plate doctors on the left side. The poor slums here. And these guys need to move back. Because this guy is going to throw exploding bombs. If you don't micromanage them against these shooty guys, they're gonna die pretty quickly. You can give them stone skin to have more HP and defense. Defense means uh, they take reduced damage, like flat damage reduction. It can be pretty good. I'm gonna stack out the enemies again. I'm actually not gonna rebuild all the walls on the left side, just so they come back inside it much more quickly. Get an expansion card to upgrade a building. Sure. So this is the danger of the desert. Desert has a lot of enemies that just throw bombs at you, which is just rude. Uh, healing potion? Like the regular range guys are not surviving. That's the interesting part. The regular range guys do not survive an attack by the bomb guys. Because they don't have enough HP, but apparently the Plague Doctors do have enough HP, which in fact I was not aware of. I could actually upgrade this wall to fully heal it, and also give it like 200 more HP. It's gonna heal you guys. Alright. I think the desert also does not have enemies to jump behind walls, I'm not sure. Here, you need to move forward too, buddy. Or plague doctors on the left side. We have eight left side now. We have seven on the right. Like these guys only deal like three damage, but because it's amplified through the plague doctors, it's gonna be more and more and more. Also, plague doctors have really good range. So having them move back and then back forward is a viable strategy. However, the big problem is going to be... I just need to keep micromanaging them, which is a huge pain. What I should do is I should just have them stay on the right side there. And just only call them forward whenever I need them. Leader level up. No, I'm just grabbing the money at this point. Rebuild the walls. And this time I'm going to actually build the walls all the way on the left side. That way I can focus on the right side if I need to repair anything. First. Uh, nothing? Huh. Thunderstorm is interesting, because it effectively will just deal continuously 50 damage to enemies that are affected by it. You know what? I'm going to buy it. And an additional defensive wall. Um, I do need more money. I need to heal this wall a bit. So, put the wall outside here. And we're immediately going to Thunderstorm. Well, I say immediately. Um, there's two big guys coming. I don't even know what they do. I think they just did a lot of damage. That's kind of all I know about them. Okay, we can... Chemicals. Make the Reinforce cheaper. Make Thunderstorm cheaper in the long run. Redraw. I'm not worried about them right now. I can also make my healing potion cheaper. Plague Doctor over here. Okay, they are breaking through. This is good. I don't want them to stack up on the right side. That way the minions have just time to pick them off one by one by one. On the left side I do want to st them to stack up. Because this wall is going to hold them back for a long time. And I will be able to just thunderstorm them if necessary. But it's really expensive to do that. Oh, I don't have minimum space anymore because they just throw the slum on the right side. That makes sense. Also, this guy is just getting destroyed. Like, he has really slow attack speed, but normally it's really bulky. But Plague Doctors just take care of really tanky enemies. Ooh, good thing that this guy... That guy could have easily just used like a firebomb over there. Good thing he didn't. Okay, I'm going to repair the slums on the right side. Because I need more minion space now. You guys can move forward. So 
we can deal with these. They're not gonna break through anytime soon. As you can see, these Plague Doctors have gigantic range. It's actually quite impressive. They only need to move a little bit before the wall. There's also an advisor that effectively doubles or increases the range of your range units by 50%. Which means the Plague Doctors can shoot from behind the previous wall, which is exceptionally useful, so they don't... I don't have to micromanage them. Alright, slums on the right side, so I can put more Plague Doctor stone. Calculate walls. I think I'm actually fully built on walls. So I don't actually have any use for these anymore. Plague Doctors on the right side at this point. It's only 7 here. Which, 7 Plague Doctors is a lot. Alright. This event usually comes towards the end, and it basically is, you can't expand anymore, which I'm pretty sure I can't anyways, because there's no longer any walls, or get a pretty good deal for it. I don't have space for Intel Agency, which would allow me to copy a skill card in my deck, which I don't need anyways. But basically, 10 more seconds between enemy waves to do stuff is really good for me right now. Okay... None of these cards I need. I could upgrade the slums, theoretically, for them to hold more space for minions. But I'm not going to want to build out further, or much further anyways. Uh, might as well just upgrade the Thunderstorm. I don't plan... I, like, I hope I don't have to use it. It's not the greatest of weapons, but it could, you know, be helpful. Also, we finally get a generator. This thing you kind of would like to have early, because it allows you to temporarily upgrade one of your cards. And some cards you only want to play like once or twice anyways. So having a thing you can grab in order to temporarily upgrade is really, really helpful. Like, really helpful. So reinforce this one. This is 1800 HP. This is a bit less, so we're gonna reinforce that one first. Build up the wall so I have more time on the side. Yeah, by the way, you could theoretically build out further afterwards. After you get to wave 30, which basically is winning the game. Wave 30 is what my goal is right now. Gonna build more slums. Actually, at this point on the right side, it's fine if they stack up as well, I guess. Just need to not destroy this wall in particular. Did they just damage themselves by using a fire arrows and then walking through it? They do! <laughs> I didn't even know that. Alright, Plague Doctor on this side. Wait, I need to move my Plague Doctors back over here. I just remembered. Okay, moving them back forward, this should be fine. Yeah, they're gonna be okay. On this side... Okay, they, they didn't get to shoot. That's good, because... Kind of, they arrived at the same time both sides, which... Is gonna be really bad for me. Left side is fine. Okay, boss on the left. When, wave 25 and right. What, both? Guess the right side is gonna be slightly slower. Do I want to delete any cards? I think I don't have enough space for more slumps, so I'm just going to start deleting this now. You guys move back. Merchant has arrived. Reinforce this wall. Um, don't need any of these. Play Retron, by the way, applies 5 Tainted, as in... The enemies will take 50% more damage after a certain period of time. But of course... We have Plague Doctors, which are not just one-time explosions that do 
a similar job. Okay, I'm actually gonna repair the Tesla tower just so the enemies are going to take a little bit longer to get over to my minions. Which should be fine on the right side here. Like, I think they are gonna be okay. The left side's probably fine as long as I don't forget to move my plague doctors forward. Maybe I should only have one wall on the left side. Yeah, this Tesla tower is literally just blocking shots for everybody. This is great. Alright, it's gonna reinforce you guys' wall probably. Here. To also heal it simultaneously. Move you guys forward. Reinforce this wall further. More Plague Doctors. I don't have minion space at this point, unfortunately. Mainly because I put the uh, slums in the front to also have like a slight defensive wall. Not the noblest thing to do, but... Well, we're trying to survive here. <laughs> okay. Uh, the right side, we're gonna just rebuild real quick. I see it real quick, but it takes a while. Okay, check out the big treasure chest on the left side. Upgrade one random card whenever you expand your city with a defensive wall. I can't do that anymore because we are out of space plus the other guy. It's less than ideal. Uh, I actually can't use any of these, so might as well grab an advisor just because there are like other advisors that give you more money based on how many advisors you have. So that's technically the most useful thing I can do. Okay, I can't repair the thing anymore. I'm gonna heal you guys. I don't think you were damaged, but just in case. Let's just see how much damage this does. Oh no. The fire, guys. Alrighty. Uh, heat wave. Everyone take a rest or get to work. Get to work is a rebel card, which means I can't do anything with it. I would need to straight up remove it. Or, produ minus 50% production speed to my, my buildings. Which, the buildings I have are not that great anyways. I could upgrade three random cards in my possession, I don't care. But 10 seconds longer time until the next enemies arrive is really good. I think I should also move these guys. No one uh, wrong back on the area. Also, we have a lot more time than usual at this point until the enemies arrive. What item could I remove? I can't play naturals anymore because I don't have the minion space. Reinforce this wall as it heals it. Maybe I do have enough minion space soon at this rate. Let's see. I think one of, or a few small guys died here. Okay, they are only coming from the left, which gives me time to just to rebuild a little bit. Maybe I can place another Plague Doctor. I can place more Plague Doctors. That's actually amazing. Okay, what I'm gonna try and do... I'm gonna try and... Place you here. 50-50 chance for it to be the Plague Doctor. Come on. Plague Doctor, please. I got the Plague Doctor. Okay, you guys also need to move back. That is 13 on this side and... 13 now on this side. That's really good. Alright, they're destroying the wall so quickly, they're not properly bunching up. But let's see how much damage this might do. Oh, is this only hitting one at a time? Oh, this is way weaker than I thought it was gonna be. Not gonna lie. Alright. Don't have space for Plague Doctors already anymore. Oh, there's nothing on this side. Okay. Moving you guys forward. Thanks to you being really wrong range units, we're fine. And even if they take down the wall, 
I will be able to rebuild it instantly thanks to the repairman. We should be good here. I think we're gonna have a real shot at winning this. Guys, you go back to the previous wall. I could delete the card. Honestly, I'm not gonna use the storm anymore. Like, I thought maybe with the Tesla Tower this could be great. It costs a lot of money to use that thing, but... I was wrong, I guess? I never really observed on how it worked. I just put it in the mix, usually on lower difficulties. But now that I know, it's not that great. I could get the leader ability cooldown reduced whenever an ally dies. But I don't want my allies to die. Uh, yeah, it's not that useful. Second market... It's a little bit late for most of these cards. The Warren gives you periodically more minion space. But, you know... Okay, many minion space though. Okay, I don't have enough. I can put one electric retron. I have a... Oh, why are you guys back here? I have a number of Ratrons here. I know why. Still... Oh, well, whatever. I have a number of Ratrons here. Those are the Exploding Force in case I need some reinforcement. Okay, you're gonna be fine on the right side, right? This wall has plenty of health. Actually gonna move you guys backwards. Then back forwards just so you are at range. Left side, this wall is okay, just need to move my guys forward. Heal it a little bit. Again, I can instantly repair this thing. So we're gonna be generally good. Right, I think this is gonna be the last wave. It's from both sides. I thought it was one side. Most final waves are only one side, but I guess the desert is both. Okay, I'm only going to repair one wall on each side. So I think I think I know it's the big spider. I think it's the big spider. I think. Do I need money at this point? No. Let's remove pottery so we get hopefully all the cards that I usually need. Reinforce the wall on this side. Rebuild one wall outside. It's the big thing. Random event. Could be good. Could be terrible. Plus 3, plus 12 to all obtain rat from cards and lose all gold. No. I need my money. Oh, oh the foxes. Right, foxes come from both sides. Guys, move back. You guys also need to move back. Okay, this is gonna be really interesting. I keep a uh, card in hand just kind of to observe. And because it slows down time whenever I like hold a card, so to speak. Uh, one fox will enrage when the other one dies, and we have the big spider on the right side. So we have two times the minions or enemies coming from both sides. Okay, I need to reinforce this wall, I think. Because. I forgot to move the minions forward. Okay. You guys are gonna be fine. Probably. We're probably going to be fine, realistically. I can actually use my leader ability just to get more cards in hand so I can reinforce can discard more things. The worst case scenario is if both walls kind of go down at the same time, more or less. But these guys have so much taint on them at this point that they are just gonna take more and more damage, and they're even putting themselves on fire. Okay, I think the guy on the right died, the one of the foxes, which is why the one on the left side enraged. Okay, I'm gonna reinforce this wall here. They should be fine afterwards. And focus on repairing this wall if we need it. Oh shoot! Right, it has. Guys, go back. 
it has a gigantic AoE of fire whenever the spider goes to the other side. The spider goes to both sides. Uh, I, s I sent you guys too far back. There's my exploding force. The spider also summons little spiders, which is kind of annoying. Now I can't repair this wall until they defeat it, but the big spider is going to walk for a long while. Okay, I'm actually just gonna repair this wall. Oh, all my restaurants exploded on the right side. Okay, this is the big wall, right? This is the big wall, yes. All this crap. Oh, it just switches sides again. It switches sides after it takes a certain amount of damage. And I think this one should switch sides again. Where are you guys? Come forward. It basically switches side whenever it reaches a certain amount of HP remaining. Is this the big wall? No, this is the small one. And I think they dealt so much damage to it that it switched sides super quickly. But I think we're good. Worst case scenario, they just destroy the wall, but I can Im immediately repair it. I can pull my forces together. Like, we actually would. Sweet. Kind of funny, I can't repair the walls. Oh, spider's dead. I didn't notice how it died, but... We win! This is my first victory of both science and female science leader. I've never actually won pollution 20 with the science leader at all. And I've actually gotten very close with a decent setup before, but I just got the Plague Doctors too late. They feel like they're absolutely essential to just straight up win. But alternatively, I could stall out the enemies for a super long time by just repairing the walls over and over again. And even if I didn't do much damage, I would eventually win with that setup too. So effectively, um, the two cards, or the two setups, is the Repairman plus the Reinforced card. Eh? Oh, there it is. The Repairman plus Reinforced card can just win you the game by itself, more or less, regardless of how lucky you get with other stuff, as long as you have enough time to set up. And I got Reinforced reasonably quickly, so that was nice. And... I got the Plague Doctors not too late either, so I was able to amass them decently well. Plus, the slums in this case helped quite a bit. You always want to have some way of improving your reticent count. And in this case, I guess I use slums, which I usually just deny because I don't have the building space available. But in this case, it worked out. Alright. That's that. I hope you have a nice day and let's see whether I managed to put this video together.